This clip demonstrates a water immersion colonoscopy insertion technique, an alternative to the conventional technique of air insufflation. The water method has been demonstrated to reduce pain and is particularly suitable for colonoscopy done with minimal or no sedation. The water immersion technique was first described in the U.S. in the 1970s as a technique to assist in identifying the lumen during endoscopy cases with severe diverticular disease. Soon thereafter, Japanese endoscopists further pioneered the use of water-assisted insertion method during the entire procedure. Studies suggest that water method is a safe alternative and endoscopic technique that decreases discomfort for the patient and minimizes the use of sedatives while upholding patient satisfaction. Specifically, several recent randomized controlled studies investigated the success rate of minimal sedation and no sedation colonoscopy with water immersion technique versus standard air insufflation. The first study showed that with minimal sedation, defined as 2 mg IV midazolam, there were increased rate of successful cecal intubation, faster time to the cecum, and decreased patient discomfort during the procedure with the water method. In the second study, which investigated the water method under no sedation, similar results were obtained. Increased rate of cecal intubation, along with increased willingness to undergo a repeat colonoscopy without sedation, and decreased patient discomfort. This cartoon demonstrates the basis for water immersion. With standard air insufflation, the sigmoid colon is distended and rises with air. This can lead to loop formation and subsequently patient discomfort. By replacing air in the lumen with water, the colon is weighed down and tends to assume a relatively straight configuration, which facilitates insertion. There are several techniques for water immersion. Our preference is to infuse room temperature water using the water jet function of the colonoscope while advancing the scope. When air pockets are encountered during insertion, they are suctioned until only water remains in the lumen. When there is significant fecal residue and the view is compromised by turbid fluid, the turbid fluid is suctioned while continuously infusing more water with the water jet until the lumen is clear. We advance the scope until either reaching the cecum or until visualization becomes difficult, usually around the larger caliber lumen of the right colon. A short burst of air at this point will typically facilitate visualization of the hepatic flexure and the scope is usually rapidly advanced to the cecum. Interestingly, the water technique often leads to significant straightening of the colon and the scope often passes areas such as the splenic flexion with a barely noticeable turn underwater. The following short clip demonstrates suctioning of residual air in the lumen, followed by suctioning of turbid fluid, while simultaneously infusing clean water through the water jet until the lumen is clear. This ensures adequate visualization and thorough study. In addition, various anatomic landmarks, as well as gross findings, are well visualized using the water technique. This is the typical appearance of the appendiceal orifice underwater, as well as the ileocecal valve and the terminal ileum. Polyps are often seen during insertion underwater. In addition, other findings are well visualized as well. We see here a patient with a rectal mass discovered with the water technique, as well as a patient with a colonic anastomosis. Small diverticula are easily identified underwater. Moderate sized diverticula are also often easily identified underwater. In cases with severe diverticulosis, it can be quite difficult to identify the lumen. In these cases, by pulling back, it is possible to get a sense of the direction of the lumen and proceed accordingly. There are multiple variations in the water insertion technique. Some endoscopists prefer to use warm water as it may decrease motility or enhance relaxation. 
Some prefer to immediately infuse 300 milliliters, 500 milliliters, or more of water in the rectum to fill the lumen before starting to advance. Variations in technique include routine repositioning of the patient from left lateral to supine when the descending colon or transverse colon is reached. Some endoscopists prefer to continue to advance all the way to the cecum underwater, while others prefer to switch to air around the hepatic flexure as this may be technically easier or faster. Although there have not been formal comparisons of these variations, the essence of the technique remains the same, and the benefits of relatively painless insertion can likely be achieved with all of the variations.